Hello everyone, I'm Tim Spector from the Zoe COVID study giving you this week's update and we're going to be discussing the good news of the rapid drop in cases uh, which continues this week although we're seeing a slight slowdown in that and we'll be looking at what the prospects are for uh, Christmas and the end of the year and having a peak idea of what might be in store for us in 2022. So let's look at the hard data and what we're seeing is that we have less than 64,000 cases per day uh, that is down about 11% from last week which is great and as you can see from the graph these that rapid decline in both vaccinated and unvaccinated people uh, looks to be slowing down a little bit uh, so we can't expect it to carry on as fast as it has been so it might start bottoming out at some point but still it's good news at the moment. Uh, the double vaccinated uh, group or double or treble vaccinated but most of them are double uh, make up 35% of the total which is about the largest it's uh, been for a while but that's actually a good thing it shows that um, uh, we're actually doing well overall. Now, one in 66 of the UK population currently have COVID, which is still really high and uh, not something to be proud of. In terms of average deaths, we are down slightly uh, on average last week, at about 987, uh, which is obviously always a slightly difficult to calculate because people can go into hospital and acquire COVID there and they get recorded but overall it's about 17 percent above what we would expect um, before the uh, pandemic for this time of year. So still getting uh, COVID related deaths that are considerable. Now hospitalizations uh, is about the same as last week about 869 a day and we have uh, 968 on ventilators which is slightly down. Now um, what's interesting is when we look at uh, what these hospitalizations mean in terms of the NHS pressures and this graph really uh, shows us quite nicely where we are now uh, on uh, so uh, a couple of weeks ago are the pressures on the NHS um, where we can see that the non-COVID line, which is the uh, the dark blue, the slightly lighter blue with COVID, and the amount of free beds there are all over the country. And of course, this is like the best case scenario because there will be regions where there's absolutely no space at all. But you can see where we are now, it's dominated by non-COVID admissions and illnesses. Whereas in January this year, uh, when we were sort of at our worst situation, it was much less non-COVID disease and much more COVID. And uh, that's where our problems are at the moment. It's this surge of extra cases that have been building up in the community, uh, not going to see their GPs, not getting their tests done, people presenting late, everything deferred that are suddenly hitting uh, hospitals across the country. And there are the heard last week there were the biggest number of uh, 999 calls ever recorded in the UK. So this uh, is a really bad situation for the NHS but only a relatively small proportion of that is due to uh, actually COVID. Now let's look at uh, age groups in more detail because it's become increasingly apparent that what happens in children is really crucial to whether there's a big subsequent population wave because children are much more likely to get infected from their classmates and spread it when they come back into the home into other generations. So um, we've seen, and you can see on this graph, that um, we've, we've got this big peak that we saw uh, in October that then dropped dramatically. And it looks like that's probably linked, uh, at least in part, to half term. Uh, that does correspond to the time when children are away from school, therefore they're getting less contacts and uh, less infections.
but we are seeing this pick up in the last uh, few days. If you look back to September when there was another big surge in uh, children's cases, we did see a couple of weeks later this reflected into the 30 to uh, 40 year olds going up again. Hopefully this time uh, we won't see that, no, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. If you look on the detailed map here, you can see this in more detail and it is reassuring that we're still seeing um, a good drop in the over 50s and over 60s. That's the purple and the brown lines at the bottom and no uh, real signs of things taking off. So I think the, the ages are linked, but hopefully as more people are getting fully vaccinated in the older groups, there won't be that same immediate uh, link in those other uh, age groups as they as the kids go back into the families. Well, of course, we'll have to, to wait and see. But certainly we've got a, a few weeks of respite, I think, um, from this. So um, I think the lesson is it, it, it's crucial to continue with the, the booster uh, or third jab program uh, as there's still not enough people taking them up. Uh, and it's the full course of the vaccine that's really important here. Not really. We shouldn't really be calling it a booster. It is the third part of the course it's that's the full course and we need to get that into people's heads it's not optional uh, and you're not really fully vaccinated unless you've had those uh, so you can learn more about boosters and, and third vaccines on our uh, on this link uh, and read this this blog and video now regions just a brief word to say there's nothing really dramatic happening in the region so we're not going to discuss it this week we, we did that last week and we'll have a look next week on that. No big differences. Uh, everything seems to be fairly uniform. So now let's look at uh, symptoms and cold like illnesses in more detail, which as you can see on this graph, uh, the cold like illnesses in yellow really shot up in uh, September and reached that peak in that first week of October, but have been coming down uh, reasonably fast but have flattened out in uh, in the last week so that levels of colds are really still very high and uh, many schools are still having problems and this again seems to coincide with uh, the half term break and coming back after that and we can see that uh, coinciding with that we've got the these peaks in covid meaning that if you've got cold-like symptoms at the moment uh, and you're aged under 18 so your your child has it's about one in three chance that that's going to be PCR positive uh, COVID so uh, a lot of both conditions around at the moment meaning it's really important um, to know those symptoms and of course uh, we keep telling people what those symptoms are they haven't changed really it's the same top uh, ones that we've seen uh, for a while now. Uh, the uh, headache, the, the sore throat, the runny nose, the sneezing uh, and just a, a, a persistent cough. Now important to uh, keep your kids at home if they've got what are these symptoms and COVID levels are very high as they are at the moment and get a PCR test or a lateral flow, uh, ideally before they go to school, not after they've infected everybody uh, and been around. Uh, it's really hard to prevent kids transmitting it in the home when they, when they come back. Um, and I think the way we can deal with this again is, is through getting the, the full vaccine course, the three doses done. About a million children have been vaccinated aged over 12. That's gonna help a bit but for many, it will be a bit too late. Um, we are uh, looking into this relationship between lateral flow tests and PCR, as many of you asked us to, uh, and we'll be giving you more data on that. We think that there is too much routine PCR testing that could be used in, in much cheaper accessible lateral flows that could be used in these situations to stop uh, children uh, infecting many others. Uh, 
and combination of these lateral flows with, say, the Zoe uh, COVID study as a surveillance tool, I think, are probably the solution. We'll give you more on that next week. Uh, now let's look uh, at the international scene, which is actually changing quite rapidly. Uh, we can see we're no longer the uh, highest in Western Europe by a long way. Uh, Belgium, Austria, Netherlands, Ireland and Greece all shown really big increases. Um, and Austria and Germany have had tougher restrictions uh, as well as uh, Ireland than us. Some of these have relaxed them recently uh, and Ireland is a, is a good example of that. Um, but uh, it's a combination of these factors, but it, it's showing that um, any relaxation of, of these, uh, these restrictions, plus maybe the, the cold weather that's hitting that part of Europe uh, also seems to be driving this. And um, I think uh, Europe, rest of Europe is in for a bad time because also they've got uh, a vaccination program that was slower than us. So they are in that period of waning vaccine effectiveness against Delta combined uh, with the winter weather, etc. cetera. Um, for the moment, we're still seeing um, low cases in some of the, the warmer Mediterranean countries, France, Portugal, Italy, um, uh, etc., cetera, uh, Spain, which is good news. Whether they're gonna get worse with, uh, with the weather, we'll have to watch out. Um, a bit of good news is what's happening in Israel still very low levels. They have really uh, rolled out their uh, triple vaccine program very effectively. And so that's uh, potentially good news uh, for the UK. So in summary, uh, although we can't yet predict Christmas uh, really accurately, uh, it's looking okay at the moment. And I think we're gonna see reasonable levels until the end of the year. Uh, I don't expect rates to go up, they should be going down, but not really disappear. Um, and I think children are the key to these waves. So if we can hang on until those Christmas holidays, that's generally going to help uh, things a lot. Um, uh, but I, I'm expecting another rise in, in January. And all this time, of course, the NHS uh, is going to be under uh, great pressure. I think uh, Plan B is now too late. Uh, I think it would have saved uh, cases and, and lives if it was introduced a couple of months ago, but I don't think there's any point now. Uh, and I think we should, whilst cases are still high, and let's face it, you know, the, these, these prevalence rates are really still high, we should still be encouraging working from home and particularly self-isolation when people have got symptoms of COVID uh, including colds and telling people about it. That really would bring these levels down and uh, help the NHS, uh, as we've seen, that is dealing with a, a non-COVID crisis at the moment. Just a word about flu. Um, there are early reports of some flu in the USA, which is the, about the only reports we've had globally of this. Nothing in Europe or the UK so far. So touch wood, uh, we can escape uh, flu, certainly uh, this time, uh, this, this part of the year until the end of the year. Um, so we do need a strategy that's gonna take us um, not just until the end of the year, but really realistically for the next four or five years as this disease does slowly fade away, but is, is gonna still be around with us. And I think, um, we now realize that mask mandates in other countries and double shot vaccines are not effective enough, as we can see from our, our, our neighbors. But the triple vaccine approach uh, and uh, self-isolation, educating the population are definitely the way forward. So please remember to subscribe, uh, share the app with uh, others who may have dropped off and not realize all the amazing things that you guys are able to deliver for us. Uh, keep on our website for updates and stay safe and keep logging.